this is our last story. We've had some good stories, right? We're not finished yet. Later on, we still have some games. And we still have some activities. And we still have some mm, peanuts for our stomach. No, we have some food. <laughs> but now, we hope that you can sit very, very still. No. No, no, Tom Tom. That's right. We have all sorts of different names. So we're going to ask you to get in a place. So, if you're sleepy, we ask you to sit up. If somebody is poking you, we will make them move because we want you to give all of your attention to the last story today, okay? Okay, Pastor Renee, yes. he's going to come with the last story. This story is a true story. True, 100%. 100%. But I would like to ask you to help me tell that story. It's a little bit uh, loud here. On the sound, just lower the green, the green microphone from a little bit. Okay. And please click the full screen of the, the slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you will help me tell the story. But before we look at this picture, what do you remember? from the stories of yesterday. What story did you hear yesterday? The boatman. The boatman. Yes, the boatman. And what did you learn about the boatman? What happened to them, the boatman? They got the fish. A little fish or a lot of fish? And why did they get a lot of fish? Who helped them? Jesus. Jesus helped them. That is really good. Very good. Thank you for your help. You are helping me. You see, that's the kind of help I need in that story. Okay. What about the first story in the morning yesterday that Pastor Jennifer shared with you? The Great Wall. What is this Great Wall? Sin. Sin. Thank you. That's the Great Wall of Sin. Yes. Do you have sin in your life? Yes. We all have. That's the problem. And that's why the wise teacher has come to help us go through this side. So this afternoon, you know one thing about the wise teacher? Young lady, Sushmi, Sushmi. The, the wise teacher has done so many things that all the books of the world cannot contain. You cannot tell everything that he has done. He has done so many things. You do how, how we call what the wise master has done? We call it miracles. Do you know what a miracle is? Yes. Miracle is something that you, that, that you cannot do, that man cannot do when you need help. And then God comes and makes it possible. Okay, I give you an example. Okay, look at this story here. They were in the boat and there was a big, big storm. Okay, they were so afraid that they would die. But then they, they shout, Wise teacher, wise teacher, we are going to, to die today in the storm. And the wise teacher, you know what he's done? He saved them. And he calmed the storm. You see here there's a storm? There there is no storm. And the wise teacher says, peace, be still no more storm. So that's one of the things that we call a miracle that the wise teacher has done. Okay, let's go to another story. You will tell me what this story is about. What's this story about? I don't know. You don't know. What, what, what's, what's wrong with these two men here? They are blind men. And they came to Jesus one day. Jesus, Master, Master, wise teacher, wise teacher, we want to see, can you help us? Do you think 
Do you think the wise teacher will say, no, I'm busy? No. Will it take, take time to help them? Yes. Yes. So go to the next one. And then they brought the two wise men to Jesus. And look at Jesus is taking them by the hand. Welcome. I love you. I take care of you. And he prayed for them. And the next one. Next slide. Oh, you know what he did one time? That's awesome. He took some mud. You know? And then, you know what he did? He stripped on it. And then he made a little bit of cream. And he put on the ice. Would you like me to spit on your ice? Okay. Okay. So the wise teacher did that. And he did put it on his eyes. And what happened to this man? He could, he, he could see. This is what we call a miracle. This is what I call a miracle. Have you ever tried to play, to play the game of being a blind man? You should try that sometime. You put something you cannot see, and you try to to move. Maybe this is a game we could play this afternoon. And, and make make you blind, and make and by the voice of your friends try to make you to learn on that right. Okay, so, hello everybody. Okay. When, after Jesus healed the eyes, you know what he told them? He told them, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Jesus doesn't want everybody to know that he can do miracles. You know why? Because everybody will want to, Jesus, do a miracle for me, do a miracle for me. And it would be too many people. So Jesus says, okay, I'm helping you, but shh, don't tell anybody. You know what they did? Next slide. They told everybody. Oh. And everybody said, hey, you know, look my eyes. I was blind before. Now I can see. Okay? So that is a great miracle. Yes? yes. Okay. Let's go to the next to the next story. This is, oh, this one is awesome. You know, <coughs> hey, I'm asking, let, let me, ah, uh, that's not the one. I'm asking you a question just before. And what's your name again? Paul? Paul. Paul. Okay, who is your best friend? Okay, it's your best friend. Okay, and let me ask you if your best friend would die suddenly. An accident right there, he's just dead. He's, and you don't expect it. Just beside you, he dies. What, what would you say? What would you do? Would you cry? Yes. Yes, you would cry. He's your best friend. You would cry. You know, when my father died, I cried. When my brother died, I cried. I was thinking maybe I'm not going to cry, but I cried. So when somebody you love die, you cry. Okay, it's normal. So here, Jesus, one of Jesus' best friends, died. His name is Lazarus. But you are right, Lazarus is the brother of Mary and Martha. Yes, I know that. So you know how many days he was dead? Four days he was dead. Okay, if someone is dead in Hong Kong, for four days. Do you think it will smell something? Yes. No. It will smell. Who? Who? who uh, how, how many of you stings from your feet? Me. Yeah. Okay. So that day, Lazarus. Listen, listen. Shh. Hello? Hello? Lazarus was there for four days. So his body was smelling bad. So when he came there, that these are Martha and Mary and the friends of the family. He says, Master Jesus, this is, this is the tomb where Lazarus is buried. You know what Jesus did that day? He, before, before he cried. Jesus cried. Do you know that Jesus can cry? Yes, thank you. It's because he loved him so much. He cried. But the story does not finish there. Because Jesus is the only true God. He has the power to bring a dead person to life again. So he stood by the side of the tomb and says, Lazarus, come out! And then what happened next? 
Lazarus came out of the tomb. This is awesome. You know why? Because no other uh, prophet or man of God or no other religion can do this. Only Jesus can do this kind of thing. Jesus is the one and only true God. Okay, let's continue our story. We continue. Then, one day, they were on a boat. Jesus had prayed all night. And then he sent his disciples, okay, you go ahead, take the boat, go on the other side of the ocean. So they go on the boat, and then there's a big, big storm. And there's a big, big storm. Yeah. And you know, in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, listen to that. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, the wind, the waves are so big. And they see someone coming and walking on the water. Can you walk on the water? Yeah. What, what would happen at the swimming pool? You try it next time you go to the swimming pool. I think I can walk on the water like Jesus. Yeah, yeah you, you, you try that. You will see smell like the water. You know it was it was dark, it was three o'clock in the morning. Are you afraid sometimes of the dark? No. Yes, you are. Tell the truth, you are. If you are alone at home and you hear a noise, you need something cracking. You will say, ah, did you hear that? What's that? Is that a ghost? No. Is that an evil spirit? Yeah. Is that a thief? Yeah. Is that somebody to come to help to, to, to do something bad in the house? I hear a noise in the other room. You know, sometimes when we are afraid, it's normal. We are alone. We are outside. It's dark. Nobody around us. No father, mother, or big brother, or big sisters. We are just by ourselves. And then you hear a noise. And then you scared a little bit. If, yeah, it's true, huh? Sometimes we're scared. So these, they were three o'clock in the morning, there's a big, 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 big storm, and they were afraid, and suddenly they see a shape, a shape of someone on the water. And they get, they get really scared. And then they start to ask, hey, Peter, is that a ghost that is coming? Look, look on the water, there is walking in the water. Is that a ghost? <laughs> do, you, do you believe ghosts exist? No. Some people are afraid of ghosts. You afraid? Okay. Well, I'm telling you, uh, let me see your name again, Noreen. I tell you, if you have Jesus in your heart, and your life, you will never be afraid of ghosts anymore because Jesus will always protect you and Jesus is always stronger than them. Even though they are not existing. But in your mind, in your mind, if you think they are, you are afraid, Jesus will bring strength and protection. Nobody can touch you. Okay? Can you say that, everybody? Nobody can. Yes, exactly. Nobody can touch me with Jesus. Okay. Listen to me and you will repeat after me, okay? Listen. With Jesus in my heart. Nobody can touch me. Nobody can touch me. Jesus is my big brother. Jesus is my big brother. And Jesus is the strongest. And Jesus is the strongest. With Jesus in my heart. With Jesus in my heart. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anything. That's good. So then Jesus comes to the them and he says, oh, oh, oh. And then next, Jesus says, don't be afraid, it's me. He did not recognize me. And then, oh, I think, wasn't there one before that? No, maybe after, maybe I did the, the oh, wrong one. Oh, okay, yes, this oh one. Okay. Oh, no, that's the last one. Anyway, 
Peter says, Jesus, if it is you, tell me to walk on the water. So Peter is asking, Jesus, if it is really you, let me walk on the water. Jesus, okay, come. So he goes on the water, and then when he look at Jesus, you know what? He can walk on the water. And then suddenly, suddenly his eyes, suddenly his eyes look outside, and he's afraid of the storm, and poof, he falls in the water. And then Jesus takes him by the hand. You see? If anytime, this is a very important picture. You, you imagine yourself. Okay. What's what's your name? Soka. Soka. So okay, let's say this is Soka. And he has a problem. And he's like a big, big problem. Nobody can save him. But Jesus can take him by the hand and pull him out of his problem and help him. And it's true for everybody. Look, Jesus is standing on the water. Peter is going in the water. But Jesus can help him to do something impossible. So remember that, children, everybody, remember this picture. Next time you get in trouble, remember that Jesus can take you by the hand and lift you up out of the water. Will you remember? Yes. yes. Okay, let's continue our story. Then after that, Jesus says, Okay, everybody, let's get in the boat and let's go home. No more storm, no more fear, no more problem. Jesus settled everything. All right. So let's go to uh, the next one. Next one. This is... Now I'm going to go back to the story of Pastor Jennifer this morning. You remember that story? Yeah. Who is he? Naudi, the farmer. What's the name of his dog? Okay, anyway, yes, okay. And then he's wondering, how can I communicate with my dog? Do you remember? And Pastor Jennifer explained. Shh, Pastor Jennifer explained that now he understand why Jesus came into this world so that we can understand how God is, what God can do, how much God loves us, and all the great things that Jesus can do. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, what is this one? Jesus on the cross, Jesus died for our sin. Okay, I just want to make something very clear. Did Jesus die because he did something wrong? No. Oh. Why did he die? For my sin. For my sin. For our sin. You sin, I sin, and that's why he took my sin upon himself when he died. That's why Jesus came. When you believe that in your heart, Jesus will save you, he will forgive you, and he will give you a new life with him in the kingdom of God. That's very important. You remember why Jesus yeah. came? The wall of sin, what is it? The wall of sin. How can we go on the other side? Sin. We cannot go over, we cannot go under, we cannot go around, we cannot climb it. Only through Jesus. But, but did Jesus die only? After he died, what happened to Jesus? They put him in the tomb. You know, Jesus really, really died. He died the, the real death for your sin. And his friends were crying. And his friends put him in the tomb because they love him. And you see, his friends are all crying. And they put him in the tomb. And they put a big stone. And they were soldiers to guard this tomb. Nobody could go there and do anything to his body. Do you think it's the end of the story of Jesus? No. On the third three days. Thank you, you're helping me. You should tell that story. After three days, Jesus came to life. And he is now living for eternal life. And you know that? Jesus is offering each one of us eternal life. Do you know that if you believe in Jesus and you will die? You never die forever. He will bring you alive again and the kingdom of heaven to be with him forever. That's how powerful Jesus is. And that's why it is important 
That's why it is important that each and every one of you children listen to me. It's very, very, very important. That's why it is important that each and every one of you believe in Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ and receive Him in your life and in your heart. That's very important because when you do, you receive forgiveness of your sin, you receive eternal life and the assurance that you will go to heaven to be with Jesus. All right? Is that good? Yeah. Understood. Okay. And with Jesus in your heart, you can go across the wall of sin and you can go to God and have a relationship with God. Okay, now I'm going to close quickly with the last, last little application story. Okay? When Jesus was going to leave, this earth, he told this story to teach each one of us how we should live. And he compares our life to two builders. One wise builder and one foolish builder. Oh! oh. Okay. Jesus says, if you listen to my word, the Bible, the word of Jesus Christ, if you listen to my word and you put them in practice, you are like this man who is the wise man who built his house. If you, listen, listen. If you listen to my word, but you don't do it, you are like this. Oh, wait. First one. Sorry. Yeah. Like this man who built on the sand. And Jesus explained this story. He said there were two builders. They go to, to choose a place to build a house. And they go near the river, and they look at the trees, the sky. So that's a nice place to build a house. So this one starts digging. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Oh, it's easy. I will build my house right here. It's by the river, and it's easy to build, and I will build it very, very fast. The other man is looking around, and, oh, this is too soft. Maybe it's not so solid. I will look for a solid place. So he goes up and he finds some rock. So he's uh, hammering the ground and boom, tam, boom, tam, boom, tam. And then it's really, really hard. So he says, I will do it there. Then we go to the next picture and then you will see. They start building. And this one very fast. He's so happy because already he finished his house. And this one is working so hard because he's working with the rock and the stone and he built a foundation and it took a long time. And this man come to the first one and said, <laughs> look, are you working for nothing? It's too long. Me, you see, I already finished my house. Then we go next to the story. What happened next? Happened next, there will be some big clouds coming and the, the, the rainy season comes. And the rain and the wind comes. And you see, he is in the riverbed. And there is a sand. And the water starts to, to, to come. Like a flash flood is going to come. But this one finally has taken all the time to build a solid house on a solid foundation on the rock. And then the rain comes. And the wind blows. And the water level is going to increase again. And then what happened next? <gasps> oh no! Look at this foolish man. He built this house without Jesus. He did his life without Jesus and his heart. And he did not listen and he did not obey to Jesus. So his life was a chaos. His life was messed up. His life was filled with trouble. And his house collapsed. Big destructions. This man is in security. This man, his house is strong. Why? Because Jesus is with him. Jesus is in his heart. Jesus is in his house. His house stands. Whatever trouble. You see, well, let's go to the previous one. You see, these two men have the same kind of problems. They have the same kind of situation. But this one can stand. This one collapsed. That's the difference if you have Jesus or if you don't have Jesus. That is a big difference. If you have Jesus, you stand. If you don't have Jesus, you lose. Is that better to have Jesus? Yes. Okay, next one. Look. <laughs> my house is trouble, my life.
life is messed up. I don't have any future. Nothing is working good for me. I'm in a lot of trouble. Nobody to help me. And I, my house is broken. And this one says, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. My life is good. I'm so happy you are blessing me. That's the difference between having Jesus in your heart or not. And Jesus come to this story says, and this is how it will be for a man who hear my word and do what it says. So it's not only to hear it, but it's to obey. Now I'm going to ask you a question. How can you obey? Can you tell me some ways how you can obey the, the commandments or the word of Jesus? Tell me something. What's something you can do to, to do what Jesus says? Sorry? To obey the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Can you name some of the Ten Commandments? Sorry? Can you give me a one commandment? You should not murder, per se. Don't murder anybody and you are obeying the Lord. Jeremy, you were raising your hand. You have the same one. Okay. Is that okay to tell lies? No. Okay, if you don't tell lies, you can do something that to obey the Lord. If someone does something bad to you, what does Jesus say to do? Forgive. Forgive is a way to do what the Lord says, to forgive someone. You know, Jesus says many things like each other. Do to other what you would like other to do to you. Do you think it's good? No. Yes, it's very good. Don't do the bad to that you don't want the body, somebody to do to you. And do something good to others that you would like others to do to you. Forgive, love one another, be patient with one another, help each other. Yes? These are all some good instructions. Obey your parents. Yeah. Obey your parents. This is good. This is good. Yeah. You should not have any other gods beside me. Can we close our eyes and we will talk to the wise teacher? Dear Jesus, you are so powerful. You are so filled with love. You love me, and I love you. I want to know you more. And I want to accept you in my life. I believe in you that if I have you in my heart, I will not be afraid. You will help me. Lord, I want to give myself to you. Lord, I know that I have sinned in my life. I have done some bad things in my life. But you died on the cross to take away my sin, to forgive me of everything of the past. And you give me a new life. And Lord, I want to follow you. I want to be like the wise builder. To build my life with you. To listen to your word. And to obey you. I want to accept you as my God. 
My only one true God. I will not believe any other God. Only you, Jesus. Because only you died for my sin. And only you came back to life after you died. You are eternal God. And I want to follow you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have done this prayer really from your heart? You really did it? Yes, Lord, this is my prayer. Raise your hand. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now, very quietly, I'm going to change direction. Does anybody have a question? It was very clear, right? If you have any questions, you can ask us any questions. So that was our last story today. But if you come back with Chaco and Cherry on Sunday, there will be more stories and more fun. Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah, you can't. We wish you could, but we can ask your wise teacher and the wise teacher, maybe some of you, you say, I want to go to church, but I can't. Do you know what? If you will pray and ask the wise teacher, wise teacher, I want to go to church, he will help you and you keep asking him. Now, very quietly, tigers, would you quietly stand, just the tigers, just the 